Hey Cougs, welcome back. I'm your host, Alexis Pedraza, and you're watching At U of H News. Last Friday night, 20-year-old Jacob Lewis was unfortunately killed after being hit by a drunk driver. Jacob was driving back home from the Taylor Swift concert at NRG Stadium with his sister when his car stalled, forcing him to get out of his vehicle to try and push it onto the shoulder of the road. While he was pushing the car, drunk driver Alan Bryant Hayes swerved and hit Jacob. The 34-year-old then fled the scene before ditching his car to escape on foot. According to the Houston Police Department, Hayes was caught and has been charged with third offense felony, driving while intoxicated and failure to stop and render aid. Friends and family are remembering Jacob as someone who loved musical theater and Pokemon. He was a recent graduate of Taylor High School in Katy, Texas. A GoFundMe for Jacob has passed the $70,000 mark this past Monday afternoon. The majority of the donations were from Taylor Swift fans for $13, her lucky number. Please never drive while intoxicated and remember to always stay safe. The U.S. Supreme Court halted a ban along with other restrictions on the abortion medication mifepristone last Friday. This keeps the nation's most popular abortion method available for now. As an appeal of the nationwide ban on the pill plays out in the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. This method of abortion, also known as medication abortions or medical abortions, involve taking a combination of medication early in pregnancy to induce a miscarriage. They are considered a safe and effective option for terminating pregnancies in early stages and are often preferred by individuals who do not want to undergo surgical procedures. The challenge drug has been deemed safer than household drugs like penicillin and Viagra, and has a death rate of roughly 0.0005%. This case is likely to end up in front of the Supreme Court after continuing to make its way through a lower appeals court. This has led the mounting cause to restructure the nation's highest court. Arguments in the challenge to ban mifepristone ban are scheduled for May 17, 2023. Mattel unveiled the first ever Barbie doll with Down syndrome as part of Fashionista's line. Mattel, the parent company of Barbie, recently announced the new Barbie doll in a step towards inclusivity. The doll makers work closely with the National Down Syndrome Society to empower individuals with Down syndrome and their families by providing resources, driving policy change, and being able to engage with local communities. President and CEO of the National Down Syndrome Society stated, this means so much for a community who for the first time can play with a Barbie doll that looks like them. This Barbie serves as a reminder that we should never underestimate the power of representation. The new Barbie doll is part of the 2023 Fashionistas lineup, which includes dolls wearing braces, wheelchairs, and with prosthetic legs. You can now purchase the Barbie doll online and it will become available in stores this summer. That's all the news I have for you today, Kooks. Don't forget to check us out on all of our social media platforms at Kook TV. I'm your host, Alexis Pedraza, and thanks for watching at U of H News. Go Kooks!